Haven't you got that vacuum cleaner fixed yet, McGee? No, and I've been working on it all day. And all I can see wrong with it is there's a little gadget missing off the thing jig there that goes under the what's it behind the hoop nanny here. <laughs> yes, I know. I told you that before you started. You did? Certainly, but you wouldn't listen. You just kept saying, what do women know about mechanics? And you brushed me off. Well, they don't know anything about mechanics. Matter of fact, women don't know much about anything. Why, Gibber McGee, how you can Oh, they're stand. sweet and nice and all that, but when it comes down to actually doing things, it takes a man. Well, who'd we better get? Before World War II, most women worked at typical female jobs or as homemakers if they were married. But on December 7th, 1941, everything was about to change. This is yours truly, Sammy Kay, thanking you so much for being with us again. Until next Sunday at the same time, may we wish you the best of luck, every happiness, and a most pleasant week to come. From the NBC Newsroom in New York, President Roosevelt said in a statement today that the Japanese have attacked the Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, from the air. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked. The Pearl Harbor bombing marked America's entrance into World War II. Men went off to war, and women vowed to do their part on the home front. Everyone was united with one common goal, to win the war, and women wanted and were expected to do their share. Thousands of women joined the military in exclusive women's services such as waves and wax. Many volunteered as nurses' aides. But no effort was too small. Women did everything from purchasing bonds that helped finance the war to collecting tin cans and other scrap metals that could be used in building war equipment. They even saved bacon grease, which was used in making ammunition. And when food, clothing, and gasoline were rationed, they learned to make do with what they had, and many planted victory gardens to grow their own vegetables. Nylons were considered a luxury because the materials were being used to make parachutes and tents for the soldiers. Women were encouraged to wear ankle socks instead. From coast to coast, many factories converted over to war production. But as more and more men went off to war, they left a huge void in the workforce, and there was a desperate need to fill their shoes. But who could they find who was strong enough, hard-working enough, and not afraid of heavy labor? Women. Women. Everywhere women looked, there were signs pointing the way to jobs. Uncle Sam was making every effort to lure women into the factories to fill these vacant positions. There were even door-to-door -door campaigns encouraging women to do their patriotic duty and enter the workforce. Many homes had blue stars hanging on the doors indicating a loved one serving in the military. Chances are the women who lived here were happy to oblige. In fact, many women took on the challenge and went off to work. They rolled up their sleeves, tied up their hair, and said, we can do it. And they did. Over six million of them who came to be known as Rosie the Riveters. But they weren't all Riveters. There were many different production jobs. And after putting up with a little teasing from their male co-workers who sent them off to the tool crib for fictitious items such as airplane stretchers, these women settled in and helped to build thousands of airplanes, warships, and billions of rounds of ammunition. As husbands fought overseas, wives were building the equipment they needed to win the war. There were plenty of single women as well, some who found a bonus of falling in love on the job with a co-worker. Many Rosies were honored with the coveted Army-Navy E-Pin Production Award for their excellent service, and ceremonies were held just for this event. On September 2, 1945, the war was finally over, and soldiers returned home to the women in their lives. 
Many of these women were Rosie the Riveters who helped them to win the war by taking care of things here on the home front. Like this Rosie who knew the sooner the war was over, the sooner she could be reunited with her paratrooper, get married and get on with her life. Many women returned to traditional roles on the job and in the home, but new doors and opportunities would open up for women, all because Rosie the Riveters answered their country's call for help, said we can do it, and then got the job done. It must give you a lot of satisfaction to hold down a real man's job. Oh, indeed it does, Mr. McGee. You must try it sometime. 